Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. And I'm delighted today to see in the news that that Pope Francis is in Baghdad and has had a uh, meeting with, let's say a summit, um, with uh, the Ayatollah al-Sistani, uh, one of the top people in uh, the top religious leaders in um, the in Baghdad and in the the um, Muslim faith, Islam. Okay, what I'd like to talk about is the faith of the puree, and I'd like to explain a little bit about how how the application of calling for unity is the beginning of a, a very remarkable transition into let's say the new millennium and how we can build a, a greater structure, global structure for religion. When, uh, when uh, there is a crisis in the family situation, looking at the faith of the puree, and if you go to puree.org, you'll understand what I'm, what I'm saying. This is uh, the first the one of the first projects of the the second row of the world peace marketing strategy so you can look under that and it's you can find it there or you can go to puree.org and look at how to unify the world's seven major religions okay the the planning process if you align all the if you have a pie shape basically um, and there's seven pieces of the pie if you put one one um, uh, religion into each of the pieces, it, it all comes up based on the planning process. It's a remarkable relationship between them. But it gives us insights into why the religions, basically, there's conflict between them. When you, Islam is a, the, the religion uh, that, that is based on the principles of equality. When when there is a crisis in the family, they will stand up and protest when when something isn't fair, when something isn't equal. If you have a if you have a pie going back and you take one piece, give there are two people, one gets a little piece of the pie and everybody the, the other person gets the entire pie. It's not fair. So it's not equal. They have to have equality. That's very, very important to 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 Muslims, to Islam, the principles of equality, and when they stand up and protest, um, that is when, when, on the opposite side of the planning circle is where Christianity is, and coming up with a plan that benefits its. So let's say that, and I've talked about the three levels of the universe, and that. Um, up, down, or straight ahead, or heaven, hell, and purgatory, or. Uh, what we're what we're looking at is if you you always have three choices on how you're going to respond to something so let's say that you have a a, a Christian who's responsible for the planning process the plan aspect of it and Islam is the glitches idea of it as you go around the planning circle uh, if you have a Muslim who's standing up and protesting what is how is the Christian going to respond? Is that is that Christian going to respond by going up and standing on the principles, coming up with a plan that benefits everyone, um, based on conflict resolution? Is that going to be something where, uh, for conflict resolution, the first requirement is that everybody has to be considered equal. So if nobody's considered equal and the, the Christian is not standing on the principles of the plan but going down at the power game saying, I don't have to listen to you. You know, you're a, you're a terrorist. I don't want to listen to you. By denying that, that uh, Muslim a voice, that's when it, it creates a sense of conflict between the two religions. By calling for unity, that's the first step of conflict resolution. And there isn't anybody who's going to complain about unity other than possibly somebody who's functioning entirely for his own interests and doesn't want to see conflict resolution, but likes to, is making uh, personal profit off of, off of the power games.
So the faith of the puree puts creates a sense of unity between the religions. It unifies the world's seven major religions based on this idea of the relationships between between the religions, how they oppose each other, and also there is a a very interesting idea here that that Donald Trump and Jared Kushner um, let's say capitalized on um, because they're kind of aware of this idea of the faith of the puree and how it works. When you have when you have the conflict between the Islam between Muslims and Christians and you have this back and forth pendulum swinging what happens is when the Jews come in that and they've been victimized by by the situation they let's say they feel threatened by it and they they become victims of the idea what it does is it creates kind of like a a low pressure area there and instead of the pendulum going straight up and down on the planning process it it pulls the pendulum off and it starts going diagonally instead and it starts to swing around and to bring in all the other other problems um, the other religions into it it starts to the it rotating revolving <coughs> revolving anyway it's going around the circle what happens then is that that it creates a sense of genocide, the sense of judgment and genocide. This is kind of where we are with 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 the Middle East when the 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 Mus uh, the Jews stand up and and protest about things. And Donald Trump has had has been let's say bragging about creating peace in the Middle East. But did he really bring peace in the Middle East? Um, did this so? Now, to go on to the next step is when that happens, um, as it's swinging around, the principle that is that blocks the whole idea and stops it from doing that is the principles taught by Buddhism. And that is, Gautama Buddha taught the principles of prosperity. Now, that's so weird to think of him teaching the principles of prosperity, but if you understand what the situation was in his circumstances. You can see what it is and you can read about it in Faith of the Puree. Uh, so that is what blocks it. Donald Trump and Jared Kushner on their plan decided that they were going to go into the Middle East. They didn't tell anybody, as far as I know, they didn't announce anything about what they were doing, but they were going to bring prosperity into the Middle East uh, by bringing in all the other uh, um, countries, the Arab countries, bringing in and and but leaving out the Palestinians. The the Palestinians didn't really have a, much of a voice in it. It was basically creating this big structure of support for bringing prosperity in. But now the question is this: Did that actually bring peace to the Middle East, or didn't it? If if everybody is everybody be, being treated fairly and equally, do are people being denied a voice? What is going to happen? Logically speaking, is there? Let's say there's three ways to look at the situation. There's up is to do what's in everyone's best interest, which is to allow prosperity for everybody, not leave anybody out. Prosperity, not offering jobs. And this is this is one of the things that Donald Trump is famous for when he's doing projects is he'll go in go, go into a government and then offer work with the government and say you will invest lots of money in your country but in this this thing but we're going to make jobs so jobs is what what they're talking about good paying jobs is that what brings prosperity to a region so I'd like what you you to do is to stop to consider who is basically more likely under these circumstances if if Pope Francis is going around and he has a plan that he's going to bring all the religions together into one 
unified idea like a school and they're all going to come together and teach the principles of their religion and they're going to uh, teach to, to people who would like to learn how to create their life the idea of the planning process. Is that a higher form of functioning or is, is Donald Trump bringing peace to the Middle East by offering good paying jobs? Now, I'm not, I don't know the circumstances of this, but based on the past experience, by offering good paying jobs to the people, then what he does is he goes in and he builds his project, disregards the, the legal uh, ramifications of it if people are standing up and protesting. Is that going to bring peace to the Middle East? How is this going to work? You have three ideas now. Two of them oppose each other. One is just keep things the way they are. The Middle East has been the Middle East for a long time. And I mean, I think my ancestors, I, my brother did a one of those ancestry things and um, followed our ancestors back. And I think my ancestors supposedly came through the Middle East 40,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago or something like that. I don't remember. So, but we're all basically came through the Middle East. It's been there a long time. Is it is Donald Trump's plan for the Middle East a Christian idea? Is that a an idea based on equality, solving a problem based on going up to stand on the principles, the seven principles of universal law? Is it ignoring the crisis or is it going down in the games? So, what I'd like you to do is as you consider the peace in the Middle East, I'd like you to consider um, like, share, and subscribe. And, but while you're doing this, as you're sharing with your family and friends, I'd like you to consider how to bring peace in the Middle East. Can you bring peace in your own family if somebody is being denied a voice, if somebody is being pushed out like the Palestinians out of their own, their own home? Is that something that is going to bring peace? Usually it takes the end-of-life crisis for people to come together with a sense of equality because they're still family. And even if the only reason they're coming together is because because they want to know if they got a share of the in the will, you know, it, it's still having to come up with a plan and it's still working through this idea. And a lot of times that's when, when people have their final say and they, they have to kind of hash out the conflict that's been going on for a long time. Leaving somebody out of a family is a terrible thing. And I'd like to like to tell you, we have a project, and I'll talk about that next, about how to bring in members of the family, and how the members of the family a lot of times are the people who are going to save the family and to save the country. Okay? So that's all for today. I'm so delighted that, that this is going on in the Middle East. And let's say that that gives, that gives um, a real chance for peace in the Middle East to come. Okay, so like, share, and subscribe. And most of all, share, because this is something that's really important for people to understand. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for watching.